coming up. A city in Germany embeds LED lights into sidewalks for smartphone addicts? A major investor dumps all his Apple shares and makes $2 billion. Uber tries its hand at yacht rides with Uber Yacht. The debate over the Klingon language heats up. Georgia pastor charged with stealing $25,000 from his church. Of course, I'd be the one reading this headline. Plus, it was $250,000, not $25,000. Uh, <laughs> Oxycontin has a 12-hour problem. Uber and Lyft say, see ya, see ya later, Austin, after losing an important vote for background checks. And more on this episode of What's... Hey there, everyone, and thank you for joining us once again. This is the Wide Open Talk Show for Monday, May 9th, 2016. Oh, and by the way, it was the last day for the open beta for Overwatch, but Blizzard has extended it by one more day. So get out there and play Overwatch. Anyway, I'm Donovan Atkinson, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host and friend, Mr. Sam Lewis. Sam, how's it going? Doing fantastic. It's good to be back after a week off. We had some stuff going on, so now we're back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It has been uh, a week. Matter of fact, I, I got in here and had to figure out, okay, how do I do show notes again? Um, <laughs> anyway, this is Wide Open Talk Show. It is a call-in show, and that number is 229-518-3525, 229-518-3525. If you're listening live, you can call us up and give us your opinion on any of the stories that we may be covering uh, during this episode, or just uh, whatever you want to talk about. Works for me. Um, so, you know what I didn't do? I didn't open up all these articles while we were sitting here chit-chatting before the show. <laughs> <laughs> what the maroon? All right. <clears throat> so... I guess we're going to start off with this whole this German city embeds LED red lights in the sidewalks for smartphone addicts. Yeah. It kind of sounds funny, doesn't it? I mean, like... It, it does. But it, it, it was somewhat apropos, actually, because my, my wife was telling me a story of something that happened last week in, in the store that she works at. And there was this mother and daughter, and... They were, I guess they were coming down an aisle and they were about to go around an, an end cap. And I guess there was, there was a shelf there that didn't have anything on it. Now, the mother dodged it. The daughter, however, <laughs> was busy <laughs> and just barely missed hitting it about right here, from what I understand. <laughs> so that's the reason why I say this is somewhat apropos because. We this has actually become a, a major issue with people walking and texting along with just like taking selfies in crazy places. Mm. Uh, you know, I think Tyler told me the number one place that people have gotten hurt or killed while taking selfies has been around trains or like on top of trains, top of moving trains. <laughs> you know, yeah. and not because of the train itself. But because what would typically be an obstacle if you were on top of a train that you should probably avoid? A tunnel? <laughs> Electrical lines. Ah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I went to Warner Brothers with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this isn't Wile E. Coyote or, or what have you on top of a train or anything like that. Um, so, yeah. We got authorities in the city of Osberg, which is roughly 35 miles from Munich. They have embedded rows of LEDs into the pavement, and they will flash red when the when uh, the crossing is closed to pedestrians. So that makes sense to me because normally, you know, you're standing there. Um, I don't know if you've ever actually used the the uh, the button where you. You know, you're you're at a, a street crossing and you press the button and you're mm -hmm. basically I think it fools us into thinking that we're actually accomplishing something because I know for yeah. a fact that all of the uh all of the lights are on timers and loops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of them are. 
So, I mean, you can ride around the city of Tifton and, and look at all of our intersections and you can see where all of the, the stuff's been cut into the to the pavement for the loops. And so it's a combination of loops and, and timing. And I'm not saying that walking up and pushing one of those buttons doesn't actually do something. But, I mean, that's typical. You're there. You, you want to walk across the street. you got to wait for the traffic to stop. You're going to press the button. And then you're, going, you're, you're looking across the street. And normally you'll have a, sign, a little LED sign or whatever that either says, don't walk, like a hand being held up and all red, or it'll go green and it looks like someone's, you know, tilting over because the wind's too blowing too hard. But that's just the way it kind of looks to me. Yeah. But now if you're too busy walking down the sidewalk and you're texting, you have the possibility of walking your ass right out into the street and, and meeting your maker. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, there have even been apps that have been designed for texting. I remember that there was an app on iOS that I kind of rolled my eyes about where it turned on your back camera. Mm-hmm. That way you could text but see what was in front of you while you were texting. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So there, it was supposed to be a safety feature, but it still empowers you to text. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, we know you, we know you dumbasses are going to continue to walk and text, but at least this way you can see what's ahead of you. And it wasn't an official iOS thing, so some app developer got smart. They went, you know what stupid thing people are doing? You know what we could cash in on? <laughs> and they did. They did. Well, I mean, I can't fault them for that. I mean, it kind of mm-hmm. makes sense. Oh, yeah. So anyway. But, but well, if your focus is on this device anyway. I mean, I'm going to intentionally focus on it. And thanks to a friendly gesture, I now have two LED lights on top of my laptop. If I'm staring at this thing right now and actually focusing on it with some of the notifications that I've got on here, I can honestly say that right now I'm not even aware of those blue lights that are on top of the laptop's webcam. Mm Mm-hmm. Which then makes me question, if we're focusing that much on something like this, are we even going to see the red lights? That's a very good point. But, I mean, they're in the, well, they flash, and uh, they flash red, which always signifies danger. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I mean, according to the uh, German television station NTV, and I'm reading this from the article, it's an article on ArsTechnica.com, it has become necessary to bring in what is a novel approach to controlling pedestrian movement after a 15-year-old girl who was wearing earbuds and looking at her smartphone was killed when she stepped in front of a tram. Yeah, and that adds a completely different layer to it. There were earbuds involved, which anytime I see someone walking down the street with a pair of earbuds in, I think, you better you better not be focused too much on that thing. Something bad's about to happen to you. <laughs> yeah, that you know, I will exercise with earbuds in, uh, walk, mm. run, or whatever. But I am not going to be. I'm just not comfortable wearing earbuds, listening to something, and focusing on my phone at the same time when I'm out and about. I actually, yeah, because you're suddenly in this personal bubble where nothing around you is even noticeable until it's too late. Yeah. Which is what they're trying to alleviate here. Mm. Now, according to the city spokesperson, Stephanie Lerman, she said, we have the additional lamps installed on two crossings that are especially frequented by the relevant target group. (laughs) So it is a target group. Um, It's going to be millennials more than anybody else. I'm pretty sure millennials and and, uh, iGens. Um. So I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Now, what I found interesting on this is kind of off to the side on this. There's another Ars, Ars Technica article that says U.S. lawmaker seeks to ban texting while walking. So over here in the U.S., we're just trying to ban it. The hell <laughs> we're trying to make it safer. Let's just ban it. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake, some sometimes... Sometimes, for some stupid reason, we have to legislate common sense. That's <laughs> I love the subtitle. Distracted walking leads to falls, and a lucky 9%, quote, strike a motionless object, end quote. 
AKA not a person. <laughs> oh. But then what will happen in the romantic comedies when one, when one of them is distracted by a text and they run into the person that you're supposed to love? What will happen then? Right. <laughs> or they run into a light post and the person that they were, they're trying to hook up with is standing there laughing at them. Mm. <laughs> so apparently this is uh, New Jersey. Assemblywoman Pamela Lampett has introduced a bill that would ban pedestrians from walking while texting, and the proposed legislation would bar the use of cell phones while walking altogether mm. unless the devices are hands-free. Right. So basically they're saying d- she wants to ban it where you can't even hold it up to your ear and talk. Put it on speaker and walk around and hold it in your hand. Well, I can see that. That's that's just as distracting as the other thing. That's the that's the dirty little secret about the whole hands-free thing, right? Is that you're just as distracted because you're you're still talking to someone while you're doing it, right? Yeah, I mean, because I mean, you're gonna have earbuds that extra in. Of holding it, but yeah. well, hands-free to me is the phone's in my pocket and I still have earbuds. And if I'm listening to music and the phone rings, you know, if you've got the type that's got the little thing right here where the two go together, you press yeah. the button, you answer the phone. Okay, you're that's hands-free. Mm. So that means I'm still oblivious to what's going on around me. Right. I don't know. Anyway, so here, for those who violate the walking and texting rule, the bill would allow for a fine of up to $50 or, (laughs) this is severe, (laughs) imprisonment of up to 15 days, (laughs) which apparently is the same penalties uh, that the state imposes for jaywalkers. So, wow. When was Mm. this article posted? Oh, huh? it was in March. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um Carl Icon or Icon. I think it's Icon. I think it's Icon. I think I hear most people pronounce it that way. <laughs> yeah. He uh he sold his Apple shares and I'm presuming he dumped yeah, he dumped all of his Apple shares. And he made $2 billion off of it. <laughs> you would. Yeah, with the amount he had. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's he's very influential when it comes to the stock market. Mm. And it's weird because he dumped what was left of, and he only, it, was, it wasn't even quite 1% stake in Apple. Yeah. It was under 1%. But he did it on fears that the Chinese authorities would bully the iPhone maker. And, of course, then Apple shares sank after the announcement, which was live. Uh, it was uh, in a live interview on CNBC. Now, this article is because we're a week behind now. So this yep. was April 28th. So it's been about a week. So uh, the shares have lost 9, lost 9% of their value since Apple revealed Tuesday their troubling first quarter financial results, which include a 26% sales drop in the greater China compared with the same period last year. We talked about that. Mm. You know, we talked about the fact that they were, they were, uh, their sales were down. <clears throat> they, they basically broke a 13 year winning streak. Um, over in China as well as over in, over here. And I'm not going to go look up how you pronounce that. Huawei or whatever again. I think I got it right this time. Maybe. I think you might have. I don't know. (laughs) So it says, Icon bought nearly 53 million Apple shares about three years ago. And last May, he said the company should be worth almost double or more than one trillion. But months later, he sold 7 million shares before putting the rest back on the stock market this year. So he's made 2 billion off the trading and estimated that people would bought... Uh, who bought in shortly after he initially did that, have generated a 50% return. Mm -hmm. He called Apple Chief Executive Tim Cook on Thursday morning to disclose the sell-off. And, of course, Tim was sad to hear it, but Mm -hmm. he said he Icon still believes that Apple shares are undervalued, and then it would hop back in if conditions in China were settled. Okay, well... (laughs) I don't know. I, I I can't I can't fathom numbers like this. I don't have <laughs> I don't have access to that kind of capital. Right. I mean, I own a little over one one share. No, wait. 
I'm trying to remember. I got in on the IPO of Square, which, I'm, you know, I'm kind of sad because I, I think I saw a headline yesterday or early this morning that said that uh, their their earnings target was kind of off. So that means that their shares are going to be down. So I, I bought $100 worth of shares whenever the IPO went. So I think it's last time I checked, my $100 was worth about 140 hmm. That's the only stock I own. <laughs> yeah. That, that shows you my, my market capability of buying stock. <laughs> well, well, come on. The stock market is just a, another form of gambling if we really think about it, right? Well, it is. It's, it is. It is. It's the whole, it, it takes money to make money. I mean, if you, I've always been told, and I don't know this, but I, I think it is pretty much accurate. Unless you've got $5,000 that you can get into the stock market with and you don't mind losing it on the very first trade that you do, you probably mm -hmm. don't need to be in the stock market. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know about you, but A, if I had $5,000, B, I would be terribly in a, in a fix if I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm not going to uh, not gonna worry about that. And like I said, the only reason why I got the square is because uh, it's this company called Level, or I forget the name of it, but anyway, they, um, because, you know, a lot of times it's difficult to get in on those IPOs of those companies. Yeah. And they worked it out so that they actually, the the, the average Joe, or in this case, the average Don, could actually <laughs> buy some stock. Mm. Yeah. And, and I could have, I could have purchased a thousand dollars worth of it if I'd have had it, but right. I figured, okay. You know, this is this is going to be one of those stocks that I, I buy in in 2016, and then when I'm a hundred years old, it'll be like you remember that that stock that hundred dollars worth of stock you bought in 2016, yeah. And cratchety old me will be like, yeah. <laughs> well, now it's it's worth two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> Great, I could buy a hamburger at McDonald's. <laughs> Great, now I'm rich and I'm too old to enjoy it. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to go spend it on the hookers and blow. No. Um, <laughs> as soon as I can get out of my wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> I got a motorized wheelchair. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the only thing you buy with the money is get a motorized version instead of That's a regular it. wheelchair. <laughs> that is it. It'll, it'll be powered by Mr. Fusion. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. So he dumped stock. Whatever. So now Uber. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't even read through this to really see. I mean, how much. Wow, that's actually Eight not bad. 82 bucks a ride. Yeah, you made you both found it at the same time. <laughs> Food, drink, resident DJs, and Ooh, views are they of hiring. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. And the and a, a views of the city's iconic shoreline come with the ride at a cost of eighty two dollars. And of course, it's AED three hundred because I believe this is taking place over in Australia. Ah, uh, okay, <laughs> that makes a bit more sense. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Uh, hmm? Dubai, Dubai. Oh. Okay, now that it makes even, even more sense, of course it's Dubai that they would be doing yeah. something like that. The place where whenever your Mercedes-Benz runs out of gas, you just pull it over to the side of the road, ditch it, and go buy a new one. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, boy. So, <laughs> yeah, they got cars, boats, helicopters. Now they're doing yachts. Wow. So it launched in Dubai Saturday, Saturday being, let's see, this was April 29th. So it launched in uh, Dubai on Saturday, $82. Um, you've got to request your spot using the app 48 hours before the ship sets sail. So it's not like, well, let's go take a trip on a yacht. Oh, I got four hours. No, you can't do that. It's not like that one scene in Dr. No where there's a bunch of boatmen just sitting there with their hats over their head, just sitting back waiting for someone to <laughs> think, I'm, oh, we've got someone now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not like that. 
So Uber's general manager in the United Arab Arab Emirates told CNN, uh, his name is Chris Free. Hmm. I wonder how much he cost. Anyway, <laughs> at, at Uber, we are constantly innovating our services. We want to be more than just a leading global technology app. We want to provide experiences at the push of a button. Okay. I don't classify them as a leading global technology app. Hmm. I I, I uh, would classify them as a leading global uh, transportation app, but not a technology app. They don't. I mean, their app doesn't do technology. Mm. I mean, it's a technological advancement, but it's no more advanced than any other app that's on iOS or Android. Yeah, I'm being nitpicky, but <laughs> don't call your app a leading global technology app. It's just an app. It's right, you know. So anyway, Uber, which was founded in 2009, has often dabbled outside world of cars, offering boat rides across the Bosphorus in Istanbul called Uber Boat. (laughs) Helicopter trips through California's Coachella Valley called Uber Chopper. (laughs) Really? Oh, goodness. He said, following the success of Uber Chopper in Dubai... We are thrilled to introduce Uber Yacht to Dubai's waters with this exclusive party that residents can book just as they would an Uber car or chopper with the same level of convenience, reliability, and accessibility. Oh, my goodness. You know, Good on them for figuring out a market, though, right? I know, right? I mean, now I want the Uber Chopper app on my phone, so next time I need to, uh, I need to go to a client's location, I can just... Call for a chopper. <laughs> right. Yeah. I thought I, I took the because the only time I have actually rode in an Uber, it was it was almost kind of on the download because I didn't have the app and the hotel called me an Uber. <laughs> so <laughs> I can just imagine me standing there in Atlanta at four o'clock in the morning, which was when I was up and them going, could, could you call me, you know, a taxi? And they called me an Uber. So instead, a chopper lands in the front <laughs> of the thing. <laughs> Well, you don't have the app? No, I'm afraid I don't. I live in a tiny town. Well, I'll just fly you there, and then we'll we'll figure this out. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I wonder how much it costs to actually get on a chopper. Mm. Mm, I don't know. But I tell you what, since we're talking about Uber, I'm going to leapfrog and uh, go to another article that's related And this just happened, I think, over the weekend, actually. So in Texas, there was a uh, some kind of vote. I say some kind of vote. You know, this is me padding dead air while I'm waiting for this freaking page to load. (laughs) All right. So anyway, basically, Uber and Lyft, of course, you know, they do the same thing, but they're they're competition. They're going to depart Austin, Texas, because the city voted against a proposition that would have allowed ride-sharing companies like Uber and Lyft to perform their own background checks. So, to break it down, Uber and Lyft are saying, we want to be responsible for doing background checks on our drivers. And the city's going, no, we don't want you to be responsible. We want to do the background checks for your, for your drivers. So the Texas city will require fingerprint background checks in the future. And the uh, the big issue from Uber and Lyft both are saying that if they are not allowed to do their own background checks, then it's going to slow down how quickly they can actually employ new drivers. Mm. So on the one hand, I kind of see Uber and Lyft's issue. They're like, okay, I've, I've actually gone through to try to apply to be an Uber driver, but they don't offer Uber in, you know, podunk towns like Tifton, Georgia. Right. And uh, it, it looks like it wouldn't be, I mean, just in a matter of days, you would be able to become uh, an Uber driver. I, I would imagine that the process is very similar uh, at Lyft. Mm-hmm. So I understand where they're saying, okay, if we're in a, a, like in a new market, which Austin's not a new market, but 
they, you know, as demand continues to grow, which apparently demand does continue to grow, they need more and more drivers. Well, what they're saying is, if you don't let us do the background checks and we have to rely on slow government, then this is going to hurt our our comp, our business. We can't get drivers in here fast enough. Now, the flip side of that is I can see the city, their position, because they're saying, look, hit your microphone. They're saying, <laughs> look, um, we we want to make sure it's all about safety. And, and they've got a right to be concerned about it because, you know, we've had instances where, and I forget where it was, but the Uber driver that just went nuts and started killing people. Yeah. Now, the thing that we need to keep in mind is it's not because he was an Uber driver that he went nuts and started killing people. He could have been a yeah. Lyft driver. He could have been a standard taxi cab driver. It's just, it just so happens that he was connected to Uber. Had nothing to do with the fact that he was an Uber driver. That, that was kind of an aside. I mean, it he could have all, been an EMT. It was all these flipping millennials in my back seat. Every single one of them. They kept tweeting. They kept Snapchatting. I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you may not be wrong. <laughs> but so I, I kind of see the point of the city. They're like, look, we want to make sure everybody's safe. We want to make sure that the people that are responsible for driving people from point A to point B are trustworthy. They don't have any skeletons in their closets, you know, this kind of thing. But. I think the the bigger picture is you got to look at that even if they do this, this cannot, it is not a guarantee to avoid the tragedy that happened with this other Uber driver. Mm. So the companies, both of the companies spent more than $8 million in ads, phone calls, texts, and mail to all of the locals in Austin, hoping that they could pass Proposition one, but fifty six percent of the voters said no to the companies regulating themselves, and that was the confusing part. Proposition one actually would have allowed the companies to regulate themselves when it comes to background checks. Mm. Fifty fifty six percent of Austin said nope, we don't want you to doing that. Which, depending on how that thing was put in their voting process, it might have been confusing anyway. I've seen some of those yes. propositions be very tricky with how they're worded. Yes, yes. And that that irritates me. I've run into that before. Just, you know, I'll go to vote. And that's the reason why this last time I did what every citizen should do, and that's look up what's going to be on your ballot and yeah. make sure you understand everything that's on the ballot if you if, if there's something that you're going to be voting for locally and you don't know what anything about it you it's your responsibility to educate yourself mm -hmm. because don't get caught in a situation like I was when I got there not this last time but it was one of the one of the times before and you know I was voting for a presidential race or or governor or whatever it was I can't remember well, there were these other things on here that even were at the <laughs> yeah. state level and the local level. And I'm going, I don't know anything about this. So I could have potentially voted the wrong way based on if I'd have known what it actually was. I could have been 100% dead set against A, because I didn't know what it was, and B, because of the way it was worded. And I've even seen some of these things go the way of, and I won't say which specific type of party it's been or something, but where they'll there'll be huge community groups that get behind vote yes on this. And then I've looked into it and gone, uh, guys, <laughs> it's actually, if we vote yes on this, it's exactly the opposite of what you want us to do. <laughs> yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah. So. so I wonder now, since, since Austin basically dropped the hammer on allowing companies like Lyft and Uber to regulate themselves in this type of situation. I wonder which cities are, are going to be next. Because you know it's coming. Yeah. I mean, they've had they've had fights in places like New York where, you know, because Uber and Lyft but and I I can't I don't know if they're both up there, but I do recall hearing that Uber was having to fight with the with the local taxi companies because of course the taxi companies are like we're losing yeah. money 
Well, you know, you guys need to innovate, number one. And number two, why in the hell should it cost a million dollars to get a medallion to be able to drive a taxi? Yeah, um, Richard Hammond actually did a show at some point where he came to America and did a whole bunch of jobs over here. And one of the things he did was taxi cab driver. And I had no idea what a racket a taxi a taxi cab driver was until I actually saw that episode. They have to pay for things. They It's not like they're hired by the company and then paid. They have to pay the company back and make up a certain amount before they even make profit from it. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. It really is. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of uh, <clears throat> almost like running an insurance debit. Mm. That's where, you know, you're an insurance guy and you got a route. And you, you go around and you try to sell insurance. Well, you've got a quota to make. And mm -hmm. let's say that quota is $500 a week. And, and that's your salary. Well, if you don't make your salary, then you start dipping into the, to the pot. So if that week you only sold $400, well, you still get your $500 salary. But next week, you got you you not only have to sell five hundred, you got to sell six hundred to get back to even, mm. and you're better off if you could sell seven hundred, right? And that can only go on for so long. And the only reason why I know about this is because uh, many many years ago, I actually looked at getting into running a debit route, and once I found out what that was all about, I went not no, but hell no. <laughs> not gonna do it nope i hate quotas of any type <laughs> i i think i think they're they're bad for any type of service or business because well look at the mere fact that whenever they they uh law enforcement has quotas for uh speeding tickets mm. you know you would i don't know who came up with this the harebrained idea but it's like okay you need to write 200 speeding tickets this week. What if people aren't speeding? <laughs> well, okay. So they went they went over the speed limit by a mile or two per hour. Oh, yep. You're speeding. Mm -hmm. No. Ridiculous. <laughs> Quotas are stupid. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. Quotas are stupid. Probably not here first, but anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, you heard it today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the first time in South Central Georgia on May 9th. <laughs> <laughs> Quotas are stupid. Speaking of stupid, Georgia. Preachers. <laughs> Not all of them. Anyway. <laughs> so we've got this former pastor of a historic Savannah church. And he stole more than $250,000 in tithes and offerings from church members over the course of a decade. So he was funneling parishioners' money into his personal bank account, and he's spending it at retailers, including <gasps> Victoria's Secret. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that is according to a federal indictment. So the grand jury has indicted the Reverend Corey McGill. Is that McGill? McGill Brown? Yeah, looks like it. <laughs> M-E-G-I-L-L -L, on 85 counts of wire fraud, 12 counts of mail fraud. That's according to charges that were filed Tuesday in U.S. District Court. It says that Brown diverted checks from his congregation at Second African Baptist Church to an account he controlled and used to make personal withdrawals between March 2005 and February of 2014. So if this is the Second African Baptist Church, where's the First African Baptist Church? Yeah, this is the first time that I've ever seen a church be the second, because normally, because again, I'm in ministry. I've been to a lot of churches. Um, it's normally the first something church of yeah. something. It's like, but they're the first. Why, why, which one of you is actually the first here? <laughs> you, know, you know, that sort of thing. The first, holiness, Baptist, God, Jesus, take the wheel, fix my tire, <laughs> uh, lock my doors, save, save my child from teenage pregnancy, Church of God. You're, you're not you're not half wrong. That's <laughs> um, but 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 yeah, um, it's it's really easy to lampoon those titles. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, okay. So so both of us are going to look at this from two separate angles, and I think those angles will agree, even though they might not be from the same angles. 
how does this guy think he was a, he was actually going to get away with this? <sighs> well, I I mean whether you there there are two angles of how does he think he's going to get away with this because if you believe there's a deity like I do then of course he's not going to freaking get away with this. You kidding me? He's stealing from his congregation. It's not just going to I'll let him get away with it. We'll we'll have some fun up in here. No, that's that's not how this is going to work. And then even if you don't believe there's a deity then People make stupid mistakes. There's no way he's going to get away with something. This op- someone's going to notice at some point, right? <laughs> so think. either way, either way, whether you're thinking secular or spiritual, he's screwed. He's there's no way that he's getting away with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, if you have have seen the latest episode of Supernatural, you'll mm-hmm. understand that Chuck, I mean God, doesn't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All he cares about is writing his memoirs because he's pissed at his sister. All right. So anyway, now I agree with you. I mean, it, this is so aggravating to me. And, and uh, the the thing is, is it's, it's things like this that have a tendency that if you've got someone that is already teetering on whether or not they want to believe or they mm. just want to basically call it all hogwash and move on. When you see something like this, a preacher, pastor, whatever, you know, you, you, you want to call him, is supposed to be one of the, if not the most trusted individual in the church. This is the guy that is supposed to have the ear of God mm-hmm. and is supposed to be able to sit there and you can trust him with all your secrets and, and, and maybe he will help guide you. Um, and let's be fair, he or she. Now, right. I understand that in in certain <laughs> indoctrinations, that's blasphemy. Yeah. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, especially Southern Baptist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but the point is, this is, a, this is a person of authority, responsibility, respect, respectability. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly you find out that after a decade that he's he's been skimming the top and you've basically been, you know— Funding his jaunt to Victoria's Secrets and whatever else is happening. And on that, not, I mean, on top of that, he was also the Savannah Chatham County police chaplain from 2010 to 2014. <laughs> uh. <laughs> He's going to hell. <laughs> So anyway, what I mean, about that. <laughs> but that that right there is what really, you know, and, and you and I, we agree on our various belief systems or lack of belief system for me, what have you. But this right, right. here, th- th- this just adds fuel to my fire when I go, well, you see right there. <laughs> that's the reason why you cannot trust those damn <laughs> church going folks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of tongue in cheek now. So, don't, oh, yeah, don't, you know, totally. don't. <clears throat> don't send hate mail. If you do, it's, uh, what's your email address? Um, <laughs> I'll be the one to go, oh, no, I agree with you. He's a heathen. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You need to cut him loose. No, it's all right. <laughs> so he also used an ATM card from his secret church account for personal shopping, mm-hmm. which included a $312 online purchase from Saddleback Leather Company and nearly $53 spent at Victoria's Secret. Oh, okay, just 53 I mean, all that was was a pair of underwear. <laughs> Unfortunately, at Victoria's Secret, you're probably not wrong. <laughs> yeah, it was One a pair of underwear. <laughs> One. Just... <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, the in- it wasn't the entire set, you know, the bra and panties. It was just the panties. That was it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Savannah. Mm. Oh, well. Well, you know what? He can bring the word of God to to all the inmates when he's in prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. What's the other one? Oh, yeah. This one was rather interesting. Now, it's a lengthy article, but basically all I'm going to do is just kind of touch on a little bit. But, all right, so, you know, OxyContin is a very powerful painkiller. Mm. Now... A new study has come out to show why 
it is so easy, or rather why we have so many people that get hooked on it and then overdose on Oxy. Mm. Oxy is categorized by the FDA as a 12-hour drug. One dose is supposed to relieve pain for 12 hours, which is like twice as long as any generic medi- medications. I mean, Advil, Tylenol, all of those guys are usually like four to six hours. Around that, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's the drug maker that makes it is Purdue Pharma. It's been around about two decades. But the problem is, is they've come to find out that it doesn't actually last for 12 hours. Okay. Uh, it lasts about half that. And considering that Oxy is in the same family as heroin. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> uh, people that were taking it, expecting to have pain relief uh, for 12 hours, and then suddenly their pain would come back after about five or six. So then what was happening is the doctors were were prescribing stronger and stronger versions of it to try to overcome the fact that people were not getting the pain relief that they needed for the 12-hour duration. Mm -hmm. And then what that was leading to was more and more people, you know, they were were taking stronger doses, and then they were ODing on the stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get through here to find the... uh, Because a neuroscientist... And physician who oversees the treatment of painkiller addicts at the Betty Ford Center in Rancho Mirage said that he that repeated episodes of withdrawal from OxyContin absolutely raise the risk that patients will abuse the medication. Uh, scientific evidence amassed over more than 20 years, including more than a dozen controlled clinical studies, supports FDA's approval of 12-hour dosing, but it doesn't exactly work that way. Mm-hmm. And, of course, everybody's like, hey, I've got it under control. <laughs> but no, you don't. I've always thought that OxyContin is probably the most dangerous drug which is currently on the market. Right. I have, Legal, anyway. Right, right. <laughs> well, you get right down to it. I think we have, and I don't have the, the statistics to prove this in front of me, but I think we have a larger prescription drug addiction problem than we do any other drug, legal or or not, in this country. Yeah, it it, wouldn't surprise me. I'd love to know the statistics on that, actually. Let's see. Prescription drug statistics. Let's see if that's going to give us what we want. Hmm. Popping pills, prescription drug abuse in America. This is, when was this? Websites. I want you to to learn something. Put the (laughs) frickin' dates of the articles at the very top, okay? Yeah. That would be nice. Okay, Mm -hmm. so 52 million people in the U.S. over the age of 12 have used prescription drugs non-medically in their lifetime. 6.1 6.1 million people have used them non-medically in the past month. 5% uh the United States, wow, that's a bad color. Mm. The United States is 5% of the world's population and consumes 75% of the world's prescription drugs. <laughs> Woo! So we have 5% of the population on the planet, but yet we we consume 75% of the world's prescription drugs. Wow. Okay. Wow. All right. So, in first tw- wor- talk about first world problems. I know, right? right? <laughs> All right. So, in 2010, enough prescription painkillers were prescribed to medicate every American adult every four hours for one month. Think about that. Man. Every American adult every four hours for one month. Mm. The number of prescription med- uh, medicine abusers in 2010 was 8.76 million. Most abuse prescription drugs fall under three categories. Painkillers, 5.1 million. 
tranquilizers, 2.2 million, and stimulants, 1.1. Uh, non-medical use of prescription drugs by state. Huh, Georgia's on the low end. Mm. Where's Kentucky? I was about to say, I bet we're pretty high on that list, actually. <laughs> I fail at geography. Let's see. Da, da, da. No, that's that's Kentucky right there. I mm. think that's Kentucky. You're on the, the one high. over Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. Okay, no, you're you're midway. Yeah, you're midway. Okay. That's that's about low high I expected us to be about midway. There's a slight problem in this state with that sort of thing. <laughs> When when you work for a recovery program at some point, then you get to find out horrible stuff like that. So yeah, we got a bit of a problem. Well, you know. Although ours ours actually stems from an interesting little thing, and this is going to sound a bit tinfoil hatty, but especially the area that I live in, in particular, has a drug problem, and the reason why is a couple of uh, cities over in a place called Lexington, there was actually a <laughs> And again, like I said, this is going to sound tinfoil hatty, but there have been documentaries about this that people can look up and everything. I wish I remembered the actual name of the facility. But there was a government-run testing facility where they would take inmates, sounding very Gotham, they would take (laughs) inmates and test drugs on them to see what the effects would be. Wow. Wow. As a result, a lot of people posit that because of all of that going on, that's why we have a drug problem, because it seeded so much into us at that point that it just sort of made the effect spread. Because if you've got a bunch of drugs, you're taking a bunch of drugs and stuff, then that sort of thing sort of spreads through an area, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's been closed down at this point and found unethical and everything, but it did exist, and a lot of people say that to this day, that's what our area's problem is, is that that facility existed, and we never really recovered. So I thought you were going to tell fun. me a story about Raylan Givens. <laughs> 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 yeah, Dad could tell you stories about Raylan Givens because he's actually from Harlan, but... <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome show. Mm. We have never watched it. We've just not gotten around to it. Really? Everyone. Yeah, because Dad comes from there, everybody has come to him. I think he's tired of it at this point. <clears throat> like, okay, we'll watch it at some point. Just shut up. <laughs> yeah, my uh, back whenever I was I was working for CityNet, my technical manager is from Kentucky, and he's from that area. Mm. And we actually asked him, you know, what how they depict it in the television show. Is that close to accurate? And he goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I was like. Ah, cool. <laughs> I'm not going up there. <laughs> I know you're not. Uh, oh, the stories Dad has told me. It is horrific, some of the stories he's <clears throat> told me about that place. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not a place I want to be. Mm. Uh, you know, unless I happen to be the guy on top, but... Right. <laughs> uh, well, we all know how that worked out for Walter White, now don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Except I never watched that show. Me neither, but I couldn't avoid what actually happened. It was everywhere. So, <laughs> Oh, so spoiler alert, he died. Yeah. Okay. That was the end of the show. Oh, okay. In fact, at the the Albuquerque newspaper, whatever that happened, actually put a fake obituary of Walter White wow. in the newspaper whenever it happened. It was like a huge thing for them. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. All right, so our final story today uh, for all you geek gamers out there um overwatch which has been in open beta if you didn't pre-order it was open beta for may 5th through the 9th if you did pre pre-order it started on the third and you and i've you've played more games than i have and then we played about four four games when was it saturday i think yeah yeah saturday afternoon it's pretty fun um but as a way of Showing their thanks, Blizzard has decided to extend the open beta for an additional 24 hours. Mm. So it actually ends on May 10th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Not specific time, Pacific (laughs) time, you know, with a P. (laughs) Right. You know, the thing that I didn't know, and I was reading through this article, and of course this is off of IGN, Mm. but um, it said if the shooting feels familiar... 
It just might be because Blizzard got a little assistance from Triarch's Call of Duty Black Ops 3 team, particularly in the way of Overwatch's aim assist. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. So, um, I don't know how yeah. many people have been playing this thing on Twitch, but I, I've actually mm. found I've, I've actually found me a new streamer to watch, which she apparently plays in the same. She's either in the same group or she's connected with uh, uh, Gassy Mexican. Uh, his name's ah. you know Max, but uh, her right. name is uh, An Ammunition. A N N M U, you know, Nishin. Clever. 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 Oh, I, like I know. It. I know. She's like 25. She's a cutie. <laughs> but um, I watched her play. Didn't realize at the time that she was, she and Max were on the same team until <laughs> I happened to, I go, I went to his stream. This was like the second time I watched her. I went to his stream and I kept, and I kept seeing her name pop up. Uh, and I think it's the Discord overlay that pops up and shows when people are talking. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> or it's something else. But anyway, and I was like, wait a minute. So then I went over to her stream, and I was like, oh, she's on the same team with Max. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a that's a fun game. Apparently my, my oldest son, Devin, who, you know, <clears throat> transparency, he works for Twitch. <laughs> works for Twitch, yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, apparently he's been playing a lot of it because he really likes it. Um, yeah, I saw that tweet from him the other day. <laughs> Yeah, he actually tweeted, I think it was this morning, and said that if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can actually get the Origins, which is the the top end, normally like $70 version of the game, yeah. for like 43 Ooh, really I'm, now? I'm like, that's not fair, because I'm a Prime member, and I've already so, bought it through Blizzard. So am I, and I haven't. Well, maybe you, <laughs> maybe you'll get lucky. Plus, then I can get Tracer and Heroes of the Storm, so... <laughs> All right, so let me see. I'm going to go to Amazon. I'm going to look it up. Overwatch. Overwatch. Hot diggity dog, it's Overwatch. Okay, let's see. Origins. Where did he find that at? Because on PC, it's still showing fifty nine ninety six. Hmm. Unless he found it somewhere else. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. It's... Well, it's not as good as I thought. Maybe I just misread what he said, but Prime members get it for forty seven ninety nine instead of fifty nine ninety nine. Okay. That's that, that's, that's like still ten bucks off. That's still not that bad. Yeah, man, if I'd have known about this, I would have bought it from here. Mm. Man. <laughs> I'll have to consider that then. Um Well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. For that little thanks. nugget of information. <laughs> thanks for letting me know. Um but yeah, I've been finding a couple of characters that I'm getting kind of good at. Um, Bastion is obvious because you're a walking freaking turret, right? So yeah. you just stand there and then just shoot everyone down, right? <laughs> um, Widowmaker's a bit interesting. She's a automatic weapon, but then if you hold the button down, it becomes a sniper rifle, and then you can shoot someone down. Mm-hmm. Um, plus she can get to high up heights cause she's got this grappling hook attachment that she pulls herself up with. So, um, I've, I told you this, but I'm going to say it publicly too. I have to stop myself from just going McCree all the time because Matt Mercer does the voice. Yep. <laughs> so it's, it's hilarious just hearing him talk. It's like, ah! um, Tracer is kind of interesting to play in the game. She's got very specific things you have to be aware of, right? She does. She's technically got a sprint forward, but it's three little bursts of her going, bzz, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And then you have to wait for them to charge back up. And then there's always the keeping in mind where you were. So whenever you do that thing that sends you back in time and heals you and everything, you can sort of work around that. But otherwise, I'm, I'm starting to get the hang of her a teensy bit too. So... I haven't really been brave enough to tackle any of the tanks. So th I, I played a little bit of the specialist Lucio, you know, the DJ in the game. Of course, I'm going to try him. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, I like the feel of him. He doesn't do a lot of damage. So you have to keep in mind your support. You're not going to be kick butt in this whenever you're doing this. You're, you're making sure everyone stays alive. So it's that sort of thing. But yeah. Yeah. I found that, um, uh... My favorite so far has been Farah, mm. 
and that's just because of the rocket launcher. Like I said, <laughs> any any first person shooter game because I suck at them. As long as I've got a a, a big ass gun and I can just blow stuff up, kill yeah. everybody, and let God sort it out afterwards. Oh, that helps. Yeah, if you crappy aim, just blow everything up. It'll happen. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yep. So, and I was. When we were playing the other day, I, and I realized this, um, we won all of those games, whether mm -hmm. we were attacking or defending. Yep. But I had to keep myself, you know, keep in mind, you're not this good. This doesn't <laughs> mean anything, you know, yeah. because, you know, granted, we, because we were playing against AI. Yep. Now, when we got to actually play against some real people, that's when I'm probably going to get my butt handed to me because, mm -hmm. you know, people are just unpredictable. Yeah, totally. But it's a fun game. I'm I'm looking forward to getting into it a little bit more. And <clears throat> like I said, I've never been a big uh, first-person shooter player. Um, I've never – my hand-eye coordination, even when I was younger, just never matched like uh, Devin's or Tyler's. Mm -hmm. Especially Devons, it just yep. never did, and and that's the reason why I kind of fell back to my my early years of playing video games. Uh, once I was an adult, was like Age of Age of Empires, <clears throat> stuff like that, mm -hmm. real time strategy games, and then of yep. course when World of Warcraft came out, I mean that to me just opened up a whole brand new world of of gaming that I was hooked on for almost ten years. Mm. And yeah. So and trying to get into first person shooters is uh is a little difficult, but you know I'm I am I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. And I've never been big on them either, with the exception of certain ones that have had story to them, right? So yep. things like Bioshock and things like that, I've always been into. But but that's because of the story. It's not because it's a shooter. <laughs> I, <laughs> I I've always joked I tolerate shooting for the story. <laughs> yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. Um. But. But yeah, so I've never been that big into them either. I just do them kind of as a hobby, playing with friends and stuff. That's the only time I've ever played Call of Duty is when I've been over at friends' houses, and we've been doing it that way. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I'm more into the other ones, like you said. And I think the reason why Overwatch feels a bit better, although it's still, I can't do it for hours like some people can, um, is that it does sort of feel like a MOBA a little bit. Yeah. So it's got like those ultimates attached and stuff like that to where it's not exactly you being some generic soldier and you have to pick something. It's it's giving them personality, and Blizzard is really good at giving characters a personality to where you, you kind of get more interested in them than you would other things. I mean, that's why Heroes of the Storm bewitched me like it did. It's First of all, I like the way they run it as a MOBA as opposed to some of the other ones, but mm -hmm. all those characters have personality, and I just... And like Hearthstone, they make cards. Things that don't actually move have personality just because there's voice acting and yep. all of it stuff. So it's Blizzard is just good at creating personalities that entertain me. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it it definitely Overwatch definitely has a different feeling than any other first person that uh, shooter that I've tried, mm. and tried <laughs> tried and failed. No, tried and died. But um, <laughs> anyway, well, that's good. Well, I think that's going to wrap us up uh, for this episode today. Uh, Sam, what you got going on? Um, you've got a new Patreon. I do. Yes, I've I finally got over my fears of putting that up because that was just me being afraid. It's like, are they going to think I'm a money grubber? So I was like, get over yourself and just put <laughs> it up. Jeez. Um, so yeah, if you go to tscn.tv slash support, then you can toss some bucks my way if I happen to give you any value with my content. And all of that content can be found at tscn.tv. And of course, if you want to get a hold of me more personally, social media wise or otherwise, you can find all that at about.me slash lab tech seven. Yep. So. <clears throat> Pretty awesome. I I made it a point to be the very first person to support you on your Patreon. So I thought it was the least I could do because you and I do this and I like a lot of the content that you create. And, uh, you know, it's the whole value for value model that mm -hmm. every time I say that, I immediately hear uh, um, Adam Curry speaking in my head. 
Oh, yeah. He's the one that actually pioneered the whole value for value thing. So. Mm -hmm. Even whenever Tom talks about it and stuff, he always gives Adam credit because he was the one that came up with it. That's so. right. All right. Well, all my stuff, uh, everything that we're creating, I say we, me, and and whenever Sam's here with me is over at slant.fm. All my social media stuff is over at about.me slash gd. Ad kissing. And if you have any feedback, the email address is feedback at slant.fm. If you want to leave a voicemail, that number is 313-718-2557. And yes, it is a different number than the live call-in number. And um, so... Remember, we record this show live Monday and Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you next uh, Wednesday for another episode of What's. Take care. Bye-bye. show is a production of the Slant FM Digital Network. Find more at slant.fm.